reaction to your question was, wouldn't that be a nice problem to have? Because let's just go back to the basics. Uh, at present, less than half of Canadians have access to some of their information, health uh, information online. Right. Less than half of physicians are able to share, you know, uh, information online. So that's the the reality of today. Now. I know that innovation sometimes happens in pockets, and it's, it, it could well be that some physicians have that nice problem to have of having too much information. So I think the first thing to do, of course, which is what we're doing, is making sure that you know we have uh, consistent information, you know, comparable information, high quality information, because when it comes to AI, as you know, here sometimes garbage in, garbage out. So having good quality of information is essential for AI to function properly and, and truly you know, help with improving healthcare for, uh, for Canadians. Um, and then the next thing is uh, uh, AI and health is, you know, and modernization of our health care system is absolutely essential. We're not going to be able to fix it just by increasing the number of, you know, uh, healthcare personnel. We know this is going to take time. So we need to, you know, uh, look at modernization and digital tools as a way of improving our system. But as we do that, we also need to reassure people that we are looking at the ethical uh, aspects of AI and health. Uh, and so, you know, we are again working with provinces and territories to develop guiding principles, you know, that will essentially put a nice little framework around AI development and, and restate our key principles that patients have to stay at the center, that there's going to be accountability, you know, that we're not delegating uh, healthcare to, you know, to machines. And all of these, like, important aspects to, you know, uh, to keep patients at the center of the equation. Uh, uh, this is also an important aspect of the FPT collaboration that's ongoing on AI and, and other digital tools. Yeah, David. Yeah, I guess I just um, question your, the, the premise you had was, um, how can the information be delivered effectively to allow for a 15 minute intervention to be as enjoyable as possible? And I think, that's the very model that's driving people out of the practice of primary <coughs> and family physicians. No, none of the physicians I know want to be able to want to want to be constrained in the delivery of care in 15-minute increments. Um, it's one of the things the reason they're leaving or people are choosing not to go into the profession. So I think as we think about um, the value that integrated health information can deliver to the clinician who's delivering the care as well as to the patient who's receiving the care. We have to keep in mind how the delivery of care models are changing from solo GPs to team-based <coughs> care and the infrastructure that we develop to provide that information has to be fluid enough to accommodate innovation in the way care is delivered. Awesome. Uh, anybody have any questions? Um, yeah, please. Yes. Uh, do, you, do you want to use one of the microphones? Oh, I'll speak loudly. You, you'll speak loudly. Yes. Um, I have a question about the state of interoperability in Quebec specifically. What is the state of it right now and in the next three years? What are the milestones you expect Quebec to hit in terms of interoperability? Uh, I'm not speaking for the province of Quebec, I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> but you, you, do you have insights, have you, based on the work? I, you see, the, the, the delivery, I think, so So we have to appreciate the roles that we, uh, as an organization, you know, we play. We're not the healthcare delivery organizations, you know, within the jurisdictions. You know, we are uh, the conveners, the national conveners, we're the facilitators and, and setting up the standards. My understanding is uh, the, without knowing the stats, I think there is all published stats, you know, that we have on the info websites on inside that has the national view as well as the jurisdictional breakdown. I do know uh, interoperability or, or, or lack of interoperability is a big issue. The, the reason, which is one of the reasons, you know, the, the decision to move to um, an integrated uh, system provider like Epic to actually come and um, start solving that problem. Uh, it is certainly, you know, stemming from the uh, frustration that has, uh, uh, that has actually come as part of the lack of interoperability, which means the data is not made available or the digitization is not happening at the fast rate. So I, that's, that's all I would say, but I think um, 
insights, our website is probably the best way to actually share the, the tangible numbers because we do capture a few things in terms of what percentage of uh, citizens within each of the province you know, could actually access their electronic, any sort of electronic information. What percentage of healthcare providers can actually exchange electronic information amongst themselves? So there are some stats you know that we have in there, but I don't have it handy right now. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Absolutely. Je 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 pense que c'est clair qu'une conscientisation, une conscience au Québec que la question des des données en santé est importante. On l'a vu avec la loi qui a été passée, la la loi 3 sur les renseignements de santé et des services sociaux. Donc Le Québec, je pense comme plusieurs autres provinces et territoires canadiens, euh, travaille euh, sur ces enjeux-là. Euh, évidemment, l'avantage que peut avoir le Québec par rapport à d'autres provinces, euh, c'est que ce sont pas démographiques. Donc, ce qu'on observe à l'échelle du Canada, parfois, c'est que euh, les plus petites juridictions ont du mal à, à, à se faire entendre euh, quand elles interagissent, notamment avec des acteurs du secteur euh, privé. Donc, c'est un peu plus facile quand on est une grosse juridiction, évidemment, avec le, 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 aussi le... Euh, comment dire, le poids de, d'une administration un peu plus euh, développée. Donc, nous aussi, au niveau fédéral, c'est ce qu'on essaye de, de faire, c'est de s'assurer que, en avançant cet agenda-là, on ne crée pas euh, des problèmes au niveau de l'équité. Donc, que, que toutes les provinces et territoires sont en mesure euh, euh, d'avancer ensemble. Je dirais que le Québec, euh, à plusieurs égards, fait figure, euh, 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 en tout cas, montre le chemin euh, à plusieurs juridictions qu'on observe avec beaucoup d'intérêt. Euh, 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 les avancées qui se font dans ce sens-là au Québec, euh, mais c'est clair qu'il demeure que partout à travers le pays, il y a un problème de fragmentation euh, et puis c'est là-dessus qu'on travaille tous ensemble. I don't think there's any reason to think that, that Quebec is taking the problem any less serious than any other province and some of the innovations, like the creation of the new agency, the, the discussions they're having around primary care are premised on precisely improvements in the area we're talking about here. And I know from our own interactions with the, with the provincial government, they're very interested in, um, in the standards question, how to, uh, um, how to collaborate on the development of standards that will enable and facilitate uh, the linkage of data within the province effectively. So one of the things I'd be looking for, um, since you asked the question, is is how are they engaging with EPIC on the development of standards and adoption of standards and the implementation of that rollout? What's the plan for that so that it links primary care, acute care, and public health in the province? I'd be looking for those sort of milestones as markers as to um, how comprehensive their plan will be for integrating data. So I think, thank you. I think we have a question over there. Uh, Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, uh, Ian Becker, uh, GP from Victoria. Thank you to the panel for coming. It's been very interesting. Thank you for your time. Thank you, GP, for uh, good, uh, not too many data jokes, but definitely uh, some <laughs> flair to your moderating. I actually have two questions. So I'll start with the first one. It sort of builds up what David just said. For about 10 years now, I've been hearing about standards. Uh, oh, we need to collaborate on standards, 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 standards. And when it comes to something like standards about terminology, I understand there's like two or three or four options, ICD this and then snow at that. And I'm just wondering, like, why haven't we just picked one? I'm assuming picking one is, would be the thing to do to all agree on a standard. So first of all, check to see if I'm right that picking one is the thing to do. And I just don't understand why it's taking 10 years and we still haven't picked one. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> you can go first. You're absolutely right. On the other side of the table, if you see, okay, within the terminology, there are two or two standards SNOMED uh, and ICD. And I would also add LOING to it. So we've already adopted LOING, we, we adopted ICOM. But between SNOMED and, and ICD, yes, I think we did. We probably haven't done a bullish job in saying, okay, go fix NOMAD for the primary care terminology. We haven't done that. Um, and this is what will start to reflect in some of the market guidance you know, that we are providing now. Because I think we have not done our self-service by clearly communicating that these are the terminology or standards. The second part is uh, how those standards are implemented. Because it's one thing to say, okay, this is the standard, but how the implementers decide to implement that and take it to their own customized level. I think that's the other problem, right? 
because it's one thing to say, okay, SNOMED is the standard for data terminology, but if you start to create various variations of it, and, and, a, every, and a national vendor, for example, have to now implement 10 different variations of the same SNOMED terminology standard, that's the problem, that's the implementation. And likewise, when you go to the exchange standard, we do know we move from uh, uh, HL7, uh, V2 to V3, and now we're on fire. So it's easier said than done. We can say, yes, you know, fire is the de facto exchange standard. And I think InfoWay has taken a position saying that, okay, fire and smart and fire are likely going to be there for the next 20 years. And if we need uh, a proper exchange of innovation, we need to do that. But what about the billions of dollars of investment that have gone into V2, V3 over the last 20 years? So how do you transition? I think that's the challenge, you know, that we're actually all grappling with. So I won't blame single person on this one, but it's a transition we're going through it. And Canada is not alone in this. US is facing that same issue. Europe is facing the same issue. It's the transition phase, you know, as we go to the next uh, a new uh, exchange standard. But but I agree with you. I think we need to we need to be a lot more aggressive and clear in terms of establishing those standards. And and hopefully you will see that our first um, uh, communication, the, the market guidance document, which is going to be released in the next four weeks, it will start to now clarify things, you know, uh, on those fronts. Great question, David. You were going to say something. Well, at the risk of becoming a pariah, I would just legislate it. Like, I would tie it to funding agreements. Because there's a chauvinism in the country that goes back your career. Individual provinces or jurisdictions would adopt, you know, bespoke standards because it had to be a made in X province or X territory solution, as opposed to taking a look at the canvas of standards that were available and starting to narrow it down so you could actually move towards interoperability. Now, the good news is there's a lot more common thinking about this now across the jurisdictions. The divisions that once were there are not nearly as sharp. The, the, the discussion we're having up here is wearing them down. I mean, it's a, it's a, it doesn't hold, the argument doesn't hold water anymore about the kind of individual chauvinistic approaches to this. But frankly, I would just tie it to funding agreements, make adoption of standards in key areas, not across the board, but in key areas, I tie it to funding agreements. Yeah, but by the way, the data transformation mechanisms that are available to be able to really collaborate between standards. So mm -hmm. it, it should be a rule that everybody follow that, even if they didn't get to that point, there's, there's data transformation. Yes. And, and there's uh, mapping that should be done. Technology is, is available to kind of handle that. Very quick question over there, uh, and then yeah, we'll- kind of touched upon the question, uh, or my question right uh, previously here. When it comes to legislation, um, do we, feel that that is a viable avenue for the Canadian market, um, just because the different jurisdictions or different provinces tend to run obviously as their own. Um, so to create a common platform or a common uh, use case, legislation might be an interesting avenue. It's done in the US on CMS mandates. So is there an opportunity for that? And do you think that's something that could be pushed either by Health Canada or the other organizations like CAHI and, and Health Employee? All right, David will have, David wanted to go first. Let me be brief. So, yes, yeah, let's I, be brief. I do think there is. I think that, I think we should be approaching this challenge as a country as though health data infrastructure was a utility. It's as important as the transportation system or the electrical and power systems. And it should, the standards are, as Abby alluded to earlier, are about both the mechanism for transmitting the information and then the information within it. There's two sets of standards. And I think there are core areas that could absolutely be mandated by, by mutual agreement of all the jurisdictions. Yeah, I think you might have missed, like earlier I said very briefly that the federal government was looking at legislative, uh, possible leg legislative, you know, frameworks in that context to, uh, you know, to, to mandate those standards and to accelerate progress really because, you know, it, it's all in the roadmap in a way, right? So it's, it's really about you know, it, it's really about moving faster and, and making sure that, you know, our intentions are clear. But what I want to say is uh, what's very important to us is, is to go about whatever option we take, to go about it collaboratively with provinces and territories. Uh, you know, we know that some, uh, and not only with provinces and territories, quite frankly, with, with vendors, we don't want to disrupt progress, we want to accelerate it. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, uh, we are reaching out to, you know, a variety of stakeholders in that context to see what's, what's possible to, you know, really drive change and, you know, again, as Abby said, not wait another decade or two to, to make this real. Uh, awesome. 
Well, we're down to our last 20 seconds. So does, do you guys want to use one or two sentences to describe what your vision is in for the next five years? Uh, where you see interoperability in Canada? Uh, Emmanuel, we'll start with you really brief, okay? Yeah, absolutely. One or two sentences. Yeah, so I would just say, uh, you know, let, let's, uh, first of all, you know, let's stop <coughs> focusing so much on the risk of data sharing and let's start focusing on the opportunities of data sharing. Uh, and the second one is like, again, I know it, it sounds like old, but collaboration. Given how our country is organized, there is no way no one can do this alone. And I will include in that the private sector. I think someone said in an earlier panel, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the success of, you know, IT solutions, uh, a key factor for the success of IT solutions will be the ability to talk to one another. And, and I would agree with that. So. David, do you want to quickly go? No, I don't. I, that's well said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say, I mean, we'll just use the different words, but I think our vision is all the same. So I think that that speaks to it. I mean, it is really about, you know, advancing and achieving the connected care because uh, everything else, you know, I mean, that to me, that is the macro vision. Everything else, you know, starts to come and actually supports it. It's really to advance the connected care uh, health system. Yeah. Uh, 